So who here is excited about teaching girls to program? Nice. So I'm Doug Ayrton, uh, infrastructure engineer at Nordstrom. I'm Jane Ayrton. I'm seven years old, and I love to program with my dad. Uh, so about six months ago, we started a journey together, learning programming and electronics. Uh, we're going to talk about our journey together, but first I'm going to talk about the current landscape for women in IT. And I'll show some research as to why girls and women are missing out. Then Jane will talk about learning programming and electronics and some of the projects we did together. Finally, I'll wrap up our time together with six concrete things you can do as parents and mentors to start your own journey. So first we'll cover the current landscape. Uh, the technology industry is one of the fastest growing industries in the US. Technology jobs are predicted to grow at a faster rate than all other jobs in the professional sector, or up 22% over the next decade. By 2018, the IT industry will only be able to fill half of its available jobs. Companies are crying out for qualified candidates. Anyone here hiring? <laughs> Yet women only hold 25% of IT-related jobs, down from 36% in 1991. 41% of women leave technology after 10 years of experience, compared to only 17% of men. Women earn over half or 52% of math and science undergrad degrees, but only 18% of computer science degrees. Women are missing out on opportunities that men take for granted. So why? Girls perceive IT careers as having little or no interaction with other people, and that IT workers are obsessed with computers. Another study of 320 junior girls in top-level math classes found that a lack of knowledge about computer science and IT careers were top reasons for not choosing a computer science major. Girls and boys still perceive computing to be a largely masculine field. In a study where sixth and eighth graders were asked to imagine someone who really knows a lot about computers and likes to use them, the majority of representations from both boys and girls were of males, often with stereotypically geeky features like glasses. In a 2009 study, researchers conducted in-depth interviews with 150 undergraduates about their pre-college computer usage and found that 63% of men had early exposure to computers at home versus only 37% of women. This lack of experience is a problem because achievement is predicted by programming experience rather than gender. When looking at students with equal levels of programming experience, gender differences in achievement disappeared. Girls miss out on early exposure to programming and creating with computers that give boys a leg up later in life. <clears throat> Girls express less confidence and rate their ability lower than boys, even when actual achievement levels are similar this continues to be one of the most consistent findings when it comes to the relationship between gender, confidence, and computing. In one study, Breyer and colleagues found that women computer science majors had less computer confidence than men, even men who were not CS majors. Girls and adults around them believe that intelligence and technical ability are innate, that boys are born with a knack for computers and that girls are not. A good deal of research has found that teachers and other adults can confuse boys' prior experience with innate ability, failing to realize that girls may seem less able simply because they've had less experience. It seems so bleak. But there is hope. There are concrete things that you can do to make a profound difference in the lives of girls you love We'll cover six specific things you can do, but first, Jane and I are going to share our story. Before we started, Jane really had no idea what I did at work and why I found it so engaging. 
I didn't want to learn programming. I, it was daunting because there was so much to learn. Once I got into it, I loved it and wanted to be a programmer. My dad helped me to understand programming. Here's a picture from his, from his lesson on arrays. We started out with Robot Turtles, a fun board game that teaches you how to program. It's great for young beginners and doesn't require a computer. Robot Turtles was really helpful because it was a gentle introduction to programming without a computer. I liked it because it's a game you can play together as a family. It's hard if you don't know your lefts and rights. Overall, I really enjoy Robot Turtles and recommend it for young beginners. Then we tried Snap Circuits and Electronics Kit for kids. I learned how batteries pow powered LED LEDs, light, and music. I liked it because you got to see LEDs blink, listen to music, and feel like you've accomplished something. It taught you how to fix problems and bugs in the circuits. The bad part was, you couldn't understand without a parent. I would recommend Snap Circuits for beginners, but you need a parent who can, who can explain what the circuits are doing. <coughs> I started programming, programming with Code.org. Code.org is a series of lessons which teach you how to program using Blockly, a drag-drop programming language. It's great for beginners, and it was how I started programming. I love Blockly because you can accomplish a lot with a little with little code. Code.org lessons start out very easy and get a little bit harder with each lesson. Here is lesson one. There are 111 lessons in all. The lessons were hard because you had to figure out how to solve each problem without help. It was helpful because each lesson was just a little bit more challenging than the last one. This was a great way to learn programming. One frustrating thing that was that if you wanted to go back or experiment or show your mom, it didn't save your work. You had to do the thing. You had to do the lesson all over again. Overall, I liked it a lot because it let you solve each problem on your own. It gave you hints without telling you exactly what to do. I, complete, I completed all 111 lessons in a few weeks. <laughs> Next, we tried Scratch. It's like Blockly, but unlike Code.org lessons, it doesn't lead you through step by step. Scratch was unhelpful for me because it was too open-ended. It just ditched you on your own. Uh, next, we tried MIT's App Inventor, which lets you make Android apps with Blockly, the drag-drop programming language used in code.org. App Inventor was helpful because it showed you how to make your phone talk, a kitty purr, and a magic eight ball, which told your future. I like the, that the video tutorials were made by women programmers. I would highly recommend App Inventor for beginners, especially if your mom or dad have an Android phone. <clears throat> then we tried Try Ruby, an introduction to the Ruby programming language. Unfortunately, Try Ruby assumed you already knew how to program. It wasn't a gentle start. It required too much typing, which is very <coughs> hard if you don't know how to type or program. Programming can be very abstract for kids. It's very helpful for kids to see the link between programming and something happening in real life. Arduino is an open source electronics platform which lets kids see LEDs blink, motors turn, and you can collect data like ambient light levels, temperature readings, and GPS coordinates. Arduino is helpful for beginners because soldering is not required. The LED blink was a was the LED blink was a great start. You got the feeling you accomplished something without it being very hard. You can quickly see results. The downside is that it requires a lot lots of typing. Overall, I liked it very much. 
We wanted to come up with a cool project to do with Arduino that didn't require lots of programming, i.e. typing. We came up with, with a cat tracker, a GPS-enabled cat collar, so we could map out where our cat roams during the day. Here's, our, here's the cat tracker we sta strapped to our cat, Caspian. <clears throat> uh, so we needed a small Arduino board, uh, a GPS unit, and a battery. Uh, the GPS unit we picked can log position every 15 seconds to an eternal flash chip for up to 16 hours, which is perfect for what we needed. Uh, the last picture shows our assembled cat tracker. And once we tested our connections with alligator clips, we needed to learn how to solder the wires from the Arduino board to the GPS chip. For soldering training, we turned to our friend uh, Wayne Wooten, who has a lot of experience with soldering. Wayne was very encouraging. He was patient. He taught me how to solder, and he taught me how to use the multimeter. We couldn't have made our cat collar without Wayne. Once we finished building the cat tracker, we needed to come up with a, a hypothesis of where our cat roamed. Here's my hypothesis of our cat's territory. <laughs> then we strapped it to our cat in a it to our cat in a waterproof bag and sent him outside. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the actual data. You can see that his territory is a bit bigger than Jane's hypothesis. He mostly sticks close to home, but he does travel about two blocks south, and he likes to go up to the elementary school as well. From the cat tracker, I learned how to solder, how to work with electronics, and how to use computers to solve a problem. So now we're going to talk about six concrete things that you can do to encourage girls in IT. <coughs> to counter the solitary hacker image, talk with girls you mentor about what it's really like to work in IT and why you enjoy it. Emphasize collaboration, give concrete examples of problems you solve, and explain how your work helps others. To counter the perception that IT is only for guys, introduce your daughter to female role models Take her to technical meetups in your city and help her meet women programmers. Introduce her to women programmers at your company. Talk to your daughter about the many developer academies for women, like Ada Developers Academy, Girl Develop It, or Black Girls Code. Find out if there are programming camps for girls in your area. <clears throat> Job shadows are another excellent way for girls to learn what programmers really do. After meeting Aja Hammerly, who runs the monthly Seattle Ruby Meetup, Jane recently had the chance to do an afternoon job shadow with her at Substantial, a web and app development firm in Seattle. I met two other women developers who are making a new Substantial web website. I also learned about their iPad games. It was interesting learning what developers do. To build confidence, start teaching girls early. Confidence and experience are important because they strongly correlate with choosing computer science as a major in college. Barron's study in 2004 found that girls with more experience reported higher levels of confidence. Boys reported being confident regardless of experience. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Don't mistake a lack of confidence with a lack of ability. Understand that girls may not seem confident even though they are highly capable. On the flip side, don't believe every guy who says he knows no JS. <laughs> <clears throat> girls gain confidence through experience, so the best thing to do is to teach girls how to program early. <laughs> Encourage them to persist through difficult problems and let them solve them on their own. Nothing kills confidence like too much help. When Jane was going through the lessons on code.org, I, I sometimes had to sit on my hands so I wouldn't help her too much. But when I solved a hard problem, I felt great. To counter the belief that girls aren't born with technical ability, say, you're right, they aren't, but neither are boys. 
intelligence and ability are muscles which can be developed with deliberate practice. And encouragement is one of the most important things you can do. A recent, a recent study of over 1,400 undergraduate students found that encouragement to persist was the driving factor behind female students' likelihood to choose a computing major or career more so than their confidence in their ability. A study by Denner in 2009 showed that girls consider their parents and other family members as the greatest influence on their career interests. If there's one takeaway from this talk, it's this. Encourage the girls you mentor to keep at it. As we've seen with Jane, kids are eager to learn when you give them age-appropriate tools and some gentle guidance. Teaching your daughter to program can be an incredibly bonding experience for both of you. Jane loves our programming time together and pesters me to program with her more than I already do. Getting started is easy with games like Robot Turtles, our websites like code.org. <clears throat> Before we wrap things up, I'd, we'd like to specifically call out women who have encouraged us or helped us to create this presentation. Thank you to each of these women engineers. And now a word on the future from Jane. I want to keep programming. This summer, <clears throat> this summer, I want to learn to type so I can learn Ruby. I also want to learn Git and Vim. The whole reason I want to learn to program is to help people and have fun. I've learned so much over the last six months. I hope you te teach your daughters to program so there can be more girl pro programmers in IT when I grow up. So <laughs> Wait, just a couple more things. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to our talk. And now go forth and teach. So we're happy to answer questions, and we also have a copy of Robot Turtles to give away. Um, we'll give it to whoever asks a question and has a daughter with the birthday closest to Jane's. <laughs> All right. So the question was, how well does your, the, the girl that you're mentoring, how well does she have to be able to read to program? Um, do you have a thought on that? You want me to say I that? don't really think you need to know to read very well. I, I think for Robot Turtles, you definitely don't know how to, you don't have to know how to read. So Robot Turtles is sort of, I, that's sort of the recommended beginning of the glide path, I guess. Um, it's a board game, doesn't require a computer. Um, I think one of, the finding, or one of the things that we found out is that using a mouse and especially dragging and dropping are surprisingly difficult for someone who has never used a computer before. And if you've been doing it for 20, 30 years or whatever, you, you, just, you don't know until you try to teach someone how to program that one of the, the biggest things is you, knowing how to use a mouse and dragging and dropping and also like why isn't the keyboard in alphabetical order is, you know, right? Like it should be. Uh, so I think reading is important once you start getting into sort of, even Blockly, you would really know how to, you need, need to know how to read to do like the like lessons on code.org. Probably not super well, but that's, that becomes important very quickly. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> maybe like Robot Turtle or Code.org or? Code.org. Code.org. Thank you. I'll try that. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Ten. Um, my daughter is, is seven also. Do you, do you find that you're, uh, that you have other friends that this, 
that you can do this with, that this is something you can share with your friends? I don't really know because I've never done that. You want to? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe pair programming is a little bit in the future. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to point out something that you, uh, you may be aware of. Coding Club by Cambridge Press for Python for kids. Amazing. It, they're very simplistic books. Uh, I have a nine-year-old son who works with <coughs> them. And it basically, once the Python is, is interpreted itself, he can do it all himself. OK. So, so I'll, I'll repeat that. So the, um, the comment was a suggestion for Coding Club. Is it just codingclub.org or .com? Books. Oh, it's books, OK. So there's some books called Coding Club about Python. Okay. Um, just an interesting one that you missed because you said that the Ruby started was a little too high level. This yep. really starts at most basic. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good. Thank you. There's also a good book by Chris Pine about Ruby. That's a good starting book for beginning programmers. Go ahead. Back there. So uh, I'm guessing you're from Seattle. Uh, so the question was, we're from Seattle, yes. So the question is, do I know of anything that's a meetup for kids specifically in the Seattle area? So uh, I know I know that there's um, there's a Lego. What is it? Bricks for Kids um, teaches Lego programming. Um, that's that's paid, but it's like there's a, there are camps you can take, um, and <clears throat> there's Ada Developers Academy. That's not for girls. That's more for for women. Um, and I have been taking Jane to the Seattle Ruby meetup, which is just an amazing community. It's so welcoming. Um, and Aja Hammerly runs it. She's fabulous. And um, the Ada Developer Academy women come to the Seattle Ruby meetup. So it's just been a very, and they're super encouraging about getting girls into programming. So just a plug for Seattle Ruby, they're, they're awesome and very welcoming. So. So I don't know that it always has to be a specific thing for kids, although I think that's, that's helpful in a different, a different way. So back there. My daughter was born on December 25th, and she's 10. Okay. <laughs> I think you're winning so far. So that's a great question. So the question was, how do we choose the cat tracker? Um, so it was, Arduino can get very complicated very fast, so um, we, I totally cherry picked that. Um, because, uh, so we bought the components from Adafruit, uh, which is run by um, Lady Ada, and uh, is, she's amazing. Um, and there are a lot of really good tutorials. Uh, the, the reason we picked it was twofold. One was that it was totally relevant to my daughter, because um, we have a cat, and, and we sort of we wanted to answer this question, where does our cat go? That's something that is very relatable for kids, right? And it's something you, can't, you cannot find out without attaching a GPS to your cat, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> right? So, so it's sort of a good example of how do we use technology to, to solve a problem that we can't solve without technology. So, so it's relevant to her, and then also there's lots of good example code, so we didn't have to, like, we wrote maybe a couple lines of code or something. So there are already example programs to start the GPS unit and to jump, dump that GPS data and then uh, to format that GPS data so we could upload it to Google Maps. So completely cherry-picked. I 
you can get very complicated with Arduino, Arduino very fast. So, so uh, back there. Okay. So my question is, how, how strong of a background in like, logic, math, do you think a kid needs when they start going into uh, programming? Uh, so the question was, how strong a background uh, do you, does your child need in logic and math? Did I, did I get that right? To start programming. And, and I think not, not very. I think that there's, one of the things you have to do with young kids is they're, you know, their mental development, they're very concrete. They're not, they haven't entered that abstract phase yet, right? So um, I think if you can make it concrete. So when I was teaching Jane about arrays, um, arrays can be very abstract, right? So there's, you know, there, there's some pointers to some memory locations and whatever, right? And that's, that's, that's totally abstract, right? So if you can say, well, an array is just a collection and let's, bring me some of your toys, which is literally what I did. I said, just bring me some of those plastic animals and we'll make an array. Because an array is just a collection, right? And we can do, collections are very important in programming because you, you want to use a computer. That's why you're using a computer because you have lots of things that you want to do something with. And so here's a collection of your toys and, and we can do something with those. We can name them or, or whatever, right? So I think if you can take the, if you can explain something in a way that's relatable to your, the, the girl that you're mentoring, then then I don't think they need a lot of abstract reasoning. So, and Jane's birthday is October 28th, by the way, just for, for reference here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, do you look at using Raspberry Pi for So the question was, did we look at Raspberry Pi versus Arduino? And <clears throat> uh, yes, I did, because I think Raspberry Pis are awesome. Uh, the tutorials that I saw required quite a bit of Python, and I didn't feel like we were quite ready to go there yet. Um, I've been trying to think of a Raspberry Pi project that would be a good introduction. So I think maybe if your kid was a little older and had typing proficiency, I think that's the biggest barrier for Jane right now, and, and her next sort of task is learning to type. So. <laughs> True. Very good. Very good point. Yes. Excellent point. Go ahead. Uh, how did Jane's perspective on programming change your understanding of it? If at all. Uh, so the question was, how did Jane's perspective on programming change my perspective? Is that? Yeah. Did she like uh, have any like enlightenment that maybe you didn't understand having programmed for so long? Well, I think I learned, I think a huge part of this is, is learning empathy, right? So, so to, I think what I, my big takeaway was when we were programming together, I didn't just, you know, park Jane on the couch and go do something else, right? So I sat with her and, and let her struggle. I think that's important, but, but also just was there to answer questions, but also just sort of being with her is super important, right? So, so. Don't, don't think about programming something, well, my kid's going to learn programming and I'm just going to pop them down on the couch and, and I'm going to go do something else, right? So I think that empathy of being with them and seeing where they're struggling, like just understanding, oh my gosh, like dragging and dropping on a trackpad is super hard for someone who doesn't have that experience. So I think also just um, explaining things, like having to explain things sort of from first principles was, was really valuable. So, so next. Any other? I can't see because of the lights. Go ahead. Oh, I think I think you're the winner here. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the question is, have we, have we tried Logo? Um, so 
Uh, Ruby has, there's a, there's a program called Kids Ruby, and that has a logo implementation. Uh, we tried that pretty early on, and it just, the typing was sort of a barrier. Um, Code.org has an excellent um, sort of implementation of that. So all of the things where you're, you're moving the angry bird to get the pig, right? That's logo, essentially, because you're doing move forward, move forward, turn right. Um, and then they do a really good job of incrementally um, building on those so that at first you're doing move forward, move forward, move forward, and then later you're doing repeat three times, move forward, and learning about loops. So, um, so yeah, code.org has a really good implementation that doesn't require typing. Kids Ruby also has a good implementation in Ruby, but you have to know how to type. So there's sort of two different examples. Yep. Questions? Okay. Great. So we've, uh, we've got the slides on speaker deck, and uh, we'll be around if you have any other questions. And I think you are the winner. So come on up. Thank you very much.